Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled, Neighbor Family Swam Naked in My Pool. I'm the property owner and don't condone this. TLDR. I go on trips to visit my family and trust my neighbor to pick up my mail for me daily. One trip I come home early to find he is having a nude pool party in my backyard without any permission. I get angry and fight with him before threatening to call the police and spray him with a hose. I installed additional cameras and got a house sitter ready for the next time I go on a long trip to make sure that he doesn't do anything again. First a little bit of backstory. I live in one country while the rest of my family, my parents and siblings, live in another one. I am single and don't have kids so every few months I go and stay there with them for a couple of weeks. I don't want to look back and be upset that I didn't go and spend enough time with my aging parents or anything. The only thing that I really needed to make sure I had taken care of was a couple things regarding my house. Now I had installed a door camera and things like that because I didn't want to get broken into and then find out two weeks later after my flight landed and I'm jet lagged. The only thing left to take care of was my mail. Due to how often I go visit it is too much of a hassle to try and call the post office and have my mail stopped and started again every single time. It doesn't really matter to me because I do pretty much everything electronically and most mail is just formalities or advertisements. It was always drilled into me growing up though that when you went on a trip you always made sure that your mail didn't pile up because that would just be a big sign to everyone that you aren't home and it's a good house to rob. I don't know if that mentally is cultural or from an older time, but it is ingrained in me. The routine is that when I go out, I nicely ask my neighbor if he wouldn't mind just picking up my mail and keeping it for me until I get back. I know that it's a small favor, but I appreciate it and I usually bring him back some snacks from my home country I know he likes as a thank you. I am on good terms with him, and it all seemed to be working out. The next point I need to talk about is that I have a pool in my backyard because it was something that I always wanted and during the summers it gets really hot. I even let neighbor bring his children to cool off and we barbecue a few times during the summer, and it all works out great. Now you might be wondering if this was all so wonderful what happened that caused me to scream at him and kick him off my property. I was ending a visit with my family and by some good luck I managed to get a flight to go back home that left in the morning instead of the one I was planning in the middle of the night, like 3 am. I like to give my neighbor a heads up when I am coming home so I can try and make a good time to meet him and get my mail from him. I don't like to put that off in case there actually is something important in the stack before throwing it out or offering him any of the coupons that I didn't want. This is the kind of guy that always has his phone in his hands when you see him and replies back almost instantly. Because of that, I found it weird that after my flight landed, he still hadn't checked back in with me. It was the afternoon his time when I sent the message and night time when I finally got back from the airport. That was when I heard a noise in my backyard and finally realized why my neighbor didn't have his phone on him. He was with a bunch of his friends and all of them were in my pool totally naked. They were swimming in my pool, sitting on my backyard furniture, empty beer cans all over the place. I was both furious and absolutely disgusted by what I was seeing. I did not want to come home after a long trip to see a bunch of naked people who I didn't know in my backyard. When neighbor saw me, he knew that he was in trouble, but I guess he wanted to try and get away with it and try to come up with some reasoning why he was there. Keep in mind that for this whole conversation he still had yet to put on a pair of shorts or anything and was just letting it hang out. Me. What are you doing here? You were just supposed to be getting my mail for me. Him. Well, it was a hot day and I know you don't mind when I bring the kids over for a quick dip. Me. Don't even pretend like this is the same thing. When your kids come over you ask and get my permission first. Secondly your kids do not equal half a dozen naked guys in my pool and on my furniture with their bare asses. At this point I think some of the guests figured out they weren't supposed to be there and covered up and started to leave. My guess was that he told them he had permission or even that I wasn't going to ever know about this. Him. Look it's just a little party and I didn't think you would be back until late in the morning. I was planning to clean everything up and you wouldn't have known we were ever here. Me. That's not the point trying to say that I wouldn't have known. 
This is my property, and you will never step foot on it again or I am going to call the police and have to arrest it so fast your head spins. He still didn't want to really leave so I ended up getting the hose and spraying him with it until he got the idea and finally just left my property. I still had a mess to clean up, but I would rather do it myself than let him stay on my property one more second. As for the mail I never got it, and I am sure if anything was important, I would have heard from whoever it was again by now. Probably just missed a few coupons if anything, but it wouldn't have been worth it. As for the future of me taking trips I luckily was able to get a backup plan for next time. I had a friend that was willing to house sit for me the next time I went away. I would give them money to stock the fridge and they could use my internet and bathroom and everything. I also installed another camera in my backyard so if he ever dared to try a stunt like that again I would catch him red-handed. I told my friend that if she saw him coming into or bringing people into my backyard again, she was to call the police right away and I taught her how to retrieve the tapes. I didn't think that it would have had to come to this, but I don't feel comfortable leaving my house unattended for a long period of time anymore. Part of me hopes that for his family's sake he stays away like he is supposed to, and the other part kind of wants me to get arrested. Also, I wish I could see him trying to explain to his wife and kids why they weren't welcome to use my pool in the hot summer anymore. The next story is titled, Aunt's family wants to use my parents' address for a low-income housing application. My dad's siblings and their families immigrated to the US 4 to 5 years ago. My dad applied for them and paid all the associated fees related to the application. Once they got here, he helped them find housing, find jobs and get into schools for the school age kids. Despite doing all of that, his siblings basically acted as if he didn't do shit for them. Not only that, but they also kissed up to my dad's younger brother who was already in the US. They thought they didn't need my dad's help and the younger brother would help them. The younger brother ended up screwing a few of them over which is decent story itself. About three weeks ago, one of my aunts and her oldest son, Kay, asked my parents to use their address as part of their application for low-income housing in the city my parents live. My dad said they can use the address, but he won't be putting their names on any sort of utilities. Aunt and Kay said my parents should help family. My dad told them he had done enough for them already. Aunt and Kay came over again earlier this week. This time, they brought a housing application where they wanted my dad to say he was my aunt's landlord. Kay told my dad to just sign, and he would fill out the rest. How nice of him. My dad once again said no. My mom asked Kay why they are applying for low-income housing instead of buying a home. They have enough money for a down payment, based on their own talk. Kay is an engineer and two other people in the family work, so they have a decent enough combined income. K said he doesn't want to because he would have to get a loan and pay interest which is against Islam. This is true, but my mom pointed out how K and my aunt were lying which is also not something a good Muslim would do. Not only are they trying to lie about where they live, but they are also lying about their situation. The application will have just my aunt, her husband and one of her daughters. However, K would live there too, and he makes enough to disqualify them. Aunt and Kay ended up leaving with Kay apparently telling my parents to just rip up the application since they won't help family. As usual, my dad's side of the family only thinks about themselves and have a short-term memory on the time and money we have already spent on them. The next story is titled, Act like the neighbor from hell and threaten my grandparents? Enjoy losing your job and house. A while back my grandparents who have lived in the same house for decades got new neighbors. It was a wife and husband with two kids, and they seemed fairly nice. The husband spoke to my grandfather a few times when they were outside and seemed genuine. He said he was a correctional officer so his hours were strange, and he may be coming and going at odd hours depending on the schedule. A few months later they went on vacation and asked my grandfather to watch their house for them make sure no one was lurking around or breaking in. A few days into their vacation my grandfather heard their dog whining in the backyard, so he looked over their fence and found the dog tied up on about a six-foot lead with no water around. He couldn't get into the yard, so he called animal control who came and took the dog. When the neighbors got home the husband went ballistic, he hit my grandparents' door so hard they thought it was going to break. He got in my grandfather's face and called him every ugly word he could come up with and told him he if ever caught him outside on his own he'd make him pay for making them lose their dog. It only escalated from there, in the middle of the night someone took the large community dumpster from the back alley and threw it over the fence into my grandparents' pool. The kids threw eggs from their backyard all over my grandparents' back patio and house. 
Someone threw a grapefruit through my grandparents' window. The police were called every time but said we couldn't prove who was doing it and they weren't caught in the act so there was nothing they could do. I had enough and I started making calls up the ladder with the correctional institution. I spoke to the warden at his facility, and I was told he would look into the issue, a few days later he showed up again at my grandparents' house while I was there going off again and this time threatening harm to my grandfather again to teach me a lesson about trying to mess with his life. I went out the door to confront him and he walked off and told me he wasn't going to hit me because he'd lose his job and I wasn't worth it but proceeded to continue screaming and threatening me and my grandfather as he walked back to his house. This time though I was ready for this prick, and I was recording everything from the moment he started slamming on the door. I called and spoke to the warden again and told him I had video evidence of the threats, and this guy's just general volatile nature. A week later two guys showed up at my grandparents' house and said they worked for the associate director of corrections. They sat down for over an hour with my grandparents and wanted to know every detail of events that has happened, so they were told everything from the dog to the vandalism to the threats. I came over and showed them the video I had taken, and we showed them copies of the police reports we had filed. Apparently, this guy had an issue with his temper among other things and was here because he had been told to take a transfer or be terminated from his previous facility, so they had transferred here. He ended up losing his job and his house was foreclosed on, my grandparents were given an order of protection, we never saw them again they left in the middle of the night not long after we met with the director people. Duck that prick. His wife who swore at my grandfather and always glared at him, and their two kids, 17 and 14, who I know had a lot to do with the vandalism that was happening to my grandparents' house. Thankfully all is well since they left, and they have since gotten new neighbors who are wonderful people and own a local restaurant. They have even brought food over to my grandparents a few times and are excellent neighbors. The last story is titled, Become the Worst Neighbor and HOA Board Member Ever? Lose Your Job and HOA. Let me start by saying never purchase a house in a HOA, it is a complete mess that should be regulated and illegal. If I knew about HOAs when I bought my first home, I would have never purchased my first home in one. Me and my wife purchased our first home when we were 24 and 25. We spent months looking at houses and areas and tried to find a forever home in a good district for potential future kids etc. We finally found a perfect one at a decent price. At first everything was great, super nice neighborhood and decent neighbors. Well, a few months after buying the house we rented an RV to go on a trip and parked it in the driveway for the three days leading up to the trip to pack it and for me to learn how half the things in it worked. Well, this is when we learned that HOAs are absolutely crazy and our neighbor was on the board of our local HOA. Within an hour of it being parked he got home and stormed over demanding we remove it from his neighborhood, or he would have it towed and fine us for every hour it was there. Myself being the average and normal person told him kindly to duck off and get out of my driveway and told him if he returns, I'll call the cops because he was screaming like a madman inches from my face. About three hours later a big rig tow truck shows up and he walked up like he was a god and handed me a plain envelope with a letter inside that pretty much said, by order of the HOA this RV is to be towed, and a fine of $1,500 for violating their rules. While Mr. Crazy board member might not listen to reason the tow truck guy, they found wasn't so fond of entering my driveway and towing a vehicle when I told him if he comes on the property, I'll call the cops. Once the tow truck driver decided he's done being involved in this mess and left neighbor goes even more crazy and storms off. I call my friend to get his dad's number because he's an attorney to ask him about this insane letter and fine I just received and to ask him some legal advice. After speaking to his father, he told me to come down, write him a $500 check and bring along all the papers I received when purchasing the home and the current letter I just received. The next day he had a very friendly letter sent to my neighbor and the HOA board. Basically, telling my neighbor to duck himself in legal terms and to leave us and our property alone. I then continued to receive fines of $1,500 a day in plain envelopes not postmarked stuffed into my mailbox that I then turned over to my friend's father and each time he sent another set of letters and contacted USPS to report the incidents. Turns out putting mail into people's mailbox is a crime, who knew? Well, we decide to go on our week-long trip across the state and mildly forget about it all. Kind of upset I had to spend $500 to have an attorney send letters but that's what they do. 
Fast forward to us returning from the trip and the RV back in our driveway for two days so we can unload, clean then return it. Again, each day more envelopes stuffed into our mailbox and more visits to our attorney and more letters sent and more incidents reported to USPS. Well, here's where the fun really begins, turns out Mr. Crazy finally gives me a summons to appear before the board. My attorney said this is crazy illegal because what they've done is use what looks like an actual legal document improperly to summon me to the board. Another $500 to the attorney and we wait for the date they made, a Tuesday at 10 a.m. They attempt to keep my attorney out of the room on some board privacy rule but quickly shut the hell up when he begins going over their own rules that they are violating to them. Deep in this HOA book are some very nicely worded rules and stuff outlining about what makes board members ineligible, and how they cannot serve if they commit certain infractions. Well guess what Mr. Crazy Neighbor has done? Committed several of them, all documented. Also, the cherry on top is that if 51% of the HOA members vote to dissolve the HOA, it all goes away. Well, it happens my wife worked part-time from home during this mess and had all the free time in the world to begin a disband the HOA campaign. Over the course of the next two months, she went around and really began to get to know our neighborhood really well. Turns out a lot of people dislike the HOA and the power-hungry seniors who act like dictators that run it. The HOA attempted to stall everything by holding no meetings, another HOA violation, and began their own campaign trying to change HOA rules to keep from being ousted and a fairly racist flyer and letter to everyone explaining the dangers of not having an HOA and all the bad people, blacks and Mexicans, that will move in and take over, sell drugs etc. That our houses would become much less valuable and everything else they could try. Turns out it's extremely fun to use someone's own rules against them. The neighborhood even started a fund that paid us back what it cost us to get the attorney started and the continued costs he had. A few weeks after their failed fear campaign and being forced to hold a meeting of vote was called by using their own rules. The HOA was no more and all remaining funds were to be dispersed back to the homeowners and members equally, this never happened, turns out somehow the HOA used all their funds in the course of the last two months. About half the former board members sold their homes and moved, including Mr. Crazy Neighbor. I've spent three hours trying to find old news articles because it was reported on mostly due to the racist letters by the HOA but it was too long ago to find anything. Moral of the whole mess, don't buy a home in an HOA and if you do, plan to hire an attorney. Thank you for listening.